Hello and welcome back to The Mentors. This is Vadim and Sergey, And you're listening to our weekly segment called The 5-Minute Pick-Me-Up where we tell you stories to motivate you for the week to come. And we got a bit of a personal motivating story this week, and I guess it's a little bit of news. So we welcomed, well, I say we as if I represent this entire organization, but NYU welcomed Vadim this week as adjunct professor of, what's the name of the course now that you're teaching? Foundations of Management. Which is, uh, I think, a personal moment of pride, even though this is not my accomplishment, this is Vadim's accomplishment. I guess when one of us accomplishes something, the other kind of feels like they did as well. I don't know, it's weird, maybe it's a twin thing, but it's just a personal moment of pride that we wanted to share with you. You know, we didn't think that either of us would be professors by the age of 33. And if our dad was around today, I think he'd be really proud. Our mom certainly is because they were both uh, pedagogues and that means they were teachers. And my dad, as you know, if you listen to our three-part series about his life, he was a principal of a school and a a reformer. And so education was just always important in our family. Um, So Vadim did get an opportunity to start teaching this class at NYU this semester. But what we wanted to talk to you about is about how he got there and what Vadim has in common with the uh, famous actor Cal Penn. Yeah, I'm mainly excited about my uh, ID, my NYU ID that gets me into the library that I can now use and abuse as much as I want. But so yeah, a couple of years ago, as our longtime listeners know, I started teaching a class that I created at SUNY Purchase, State University of New York in Purchase College about entrepreneurship. And that opportunity kind of came out of nowhere. I didn't know that it was going to happen ahead of time. I actually was at a full-time gig at the time. I had done some teaching here and there, mainly professional development. And this opportunity came out of nowhere to, to teach at a university as a lecturer and create a whole entire course. And in the beginning when I was evaluating the opportunity, you know, there was actually a couple of moments of doubt. Like, should I do this? You know, it's a an hour and a half away from from New York City where I live, so it would be a long commute. I already have a full-time job, so it would kind of add quite a lot of responsibility on top of what I already had. I personally hadn't heard of Purchase College at the time, so I needed to do some investigating there as well. I would have to leave the office early on Wednesdays and I had to negotiate that with my boss at the time. So there were a lot of moments when I was considering this opportunity, even though it was clearly a pretty sweet gig, where I thought maybe I should say no, or maybe I shouldn't do it, maybe it's not worth it, the commute is too long, you know, an hour and a half each way. Uh, It would distract me from my current plans of what I wanna do. Do I really wanna go the teaching route, right? There There was all these things that I could have not done. But ultimately, I decided that these types of things don't come too often. And I remember we had Kerry Smith on the show, the founder of Big Ass Fans, and he had this point too when he, as he came up with the idea for his business, where opportunities, big opportunities or shifts in careers don't often present themselves. And sometimes it could take three, four, five, six, ten years for that type of opportunity to come again. So luckily... I made the decision to go ahead and take the job even though the circumstances weren't ideal. Now, of course, what ended up coming from it, as always, me and Sergey say, you know, oftentimes when you try something new, the things that come from it are things that you cannot expect or predict ahead of time. I got to create a class that was really fun and exciting. It was a flipped classroom style scenario. I got to work with 28 students the first semester, the next semester, uh, 25 students, and then 30 students. and. When I got back the teacher evaluations, I realized I was changing lives, that these students were actually getting impacted in a way that, you know, only few professors impacted me in college, that what I always wanted to feel, which is, you know, in school, do you get the skills that can help you be productive afterwards, that can help you be successful afterwards? Is there like a direct correlation there now is actually helping these students do exactly that? So eventually I realized I really like teaching. And even though I did a little bit of that before, this really solidified that for me. And I also realized that it's something that I want to continue to get better and better at. And of course, that led to you actually doing that for a few years. You're now in your third year of teaching at Purchase College. And then you realize you want to teach at another university that was bigger and that was, you know, closer to home. You decided to see if there are any opportunities here locally right in the city. And because I was working at New York University, you were able to get introduced to somebody who introduced you to somebody who told you maybe there's an open position to teach in the fall. And this actually management course came together 
together in just the last couple of weeks. You didn't even find out until last week that you were going to teach it. And, it, you know, being a professor is not even something you thought you would do until you were maybe in your 50s. It's, it, it's, not, it's something that you thought was cool and would be an accomplishment, but not something that you necessarily thought would happen at this young age. And so sometimes opportunities are disguised as something that you might not necessarily want to do right now, or it doesn't seem that big right now, but it can actually lead to something bigger down the line. And so what we want to get you in the habit of thinking more long term. And so we talked about Cal Penn earlier on in the conversation, and Cal had a very similar experience. He wanted to be an actor. He went to UCLA with the goal of being an actor, and he started booking small gigs here or there, small independent films, commercials, stuff like that through this relatively unknown agent. He wasn't part of a big agency and he started doing this while still in college. And he got a call from his uh, agent. And if you if you don't know Cal, right, Cal Penn of, of Harold and Kumar, the famous uh, American actor of, of Indian descent, this is relevant. He got a call from his agent saying, now I have this movie for you that I got you the audition but, you know, you're going to have to hear me out. He's like, oh, here we go. What is it? So it's for a character named Taj Mahal. And he hung up the phone. <laughs> He's like, there's no way I'm going to do this caricature of what an Indian is. I'm an Indian American. You know, I speak fluent English with no accent. Like, I don't want to play this bit role that's going to then uh, pigeonhole me into this character actor that's going to play these Indian guys, uh, stereotypes of Indians for the rest of his life. And I'm going to be a sellout, basically. And so he didn't want to do it at first, but his agent kept on pestering him. And she told him, listen, the reality is you are a brown actor in L.A., you're going to have to work much harder than anybody else to get recognized. And I need you to get this on your resume to be able to even get you in the room for bigger opportunities that you want down the line. And so anyway, he ended up getting the role. He ended up uh, doing Van Wilder, which led later on to Harold and Kumar. Later on, it led to roles in House and Designated Survivor and all these different roles where he actually got to play the kind of characters that he wanted to do rather than a caricature of an Indian character that he was worried about doing. So what we want you to take away from Vadim's experience taking on that smaller lecturer role at SUNY Purchase that led to NYU and what Cal ended up doing taking on that role he didn't want to do in the beginning is that sometimes you have to think of your career a little bit more long term and give yourself those experiences early on that can be an anchor to future opportunities that could be much bigger. So even if you're in a job that's not ideal right now, you do have the opportunity to take on projects that could set you up for a future better career. You do have the opportunity to work on things on the side uh, that you know might seem small at first, but then later on will help separate you amongst other people that didn't take that initiative. Sometimes opportunities don't look ideal when you first look at them, but if you just buckle down and say yes, you never know what's going to come from it, and oftentimes it'll help you skip levels in your career. That's it for the five minute pick me up for this week. And we'll see you on Wednesday with a rebroadcast of one of our episodes that I think is actually really top of mind for what we're talking about today, which is creating opportunities for yourself that can lead to bigger things down the line. And that is how to network like a pickup artist. We're excited to share that episode with you on Wednesday. So talk to you soon. Yeah.